Hi, I'm Dr. Dean Shear. Oish U, Oklahoma City. We're going to uh, give you a little overview of our skeletal system for human anatomy lab exam number one, but it's in your chapter two of your lab manual. As we notice, the skeleton here is a complete articulated skeleton compared to a disarticulated skeleton you may have seen in a lab with many bones pulled apart. On a complete skeleton, we're going to notice our divisions, one being the axial skeleton, which is in the core, comprising the skull, the vertebral column, the thoracic cage, and the appendicular skeleton, which is going to comprise the girdles, which we have a pectoral girdle with the upper limbs. We have the pelvic girdle on each side with the lower limbs. And we're going to focus a little more detail and go through each of the bones within each of these subcategories as we're calling them divisions of the skeletal system. We're going to do a little closer inspection of a skull. Let's bring this a little closer to, to you. We're going to cover the divisions of our skull, which includes cranial bones, which are the bones of the brain case, and the bones of the facial region. A lot of term we think of someone's face, they're from these facial bones. Up front we have our frontal bone and I'll show you a frontal bone disarticulated. As you can see, the frontal bone There's an ethmoidal notch right here. This is where the ethmoid bone resides. I'm going to grab you a small ethmoid bone and show you the ethmoid bone. Disarticulated. This little piece that comes up here in the midline, this is the crystagalli of the ethmoid bone. This model does not show the perpendicular plate that comes down below here which sits on top of a facial region bone known as the vomer bone. That makes the nasal septum. I'm going to give you a little show so we can see inside where that crystagalli, that mid, that median or mid sagittal plane structure sticking up right here, crystagalli. The, the, this is part of the bones of the cranium. We also have bones on the side here known as the parietal bones. We have a left and right parietal bone. As we can see, parietal bone. On some of these borders, they're kind of a zigzag edge. These are known as sutures. These right here in the front, we call this suture coming across. Just posterior to the frontal bone, this is the coronal suture and the sagittal suture is going right here in the midline. 
two Prada bones coming together like so would articulate with a frontal bone like so. One way to distinguish right and left is a small anterior and inferior structure on the coronal suture, the smooth side. We call this Elvis's sideburns because just like sideburns, it would go just in front of the ear, which would be about right here. And this would be the left. A lot of times, a lot of people will put it like this to understand that the squamosal suture goes around the ear. Just think of it like smooth, thin. See, it's thin and flat, which means squamosal. That's where the name comes from. These are our parietal bones, left and right. In the posterior aspect and inferior aspect of the skull, we have what's known as the occipital bone. This one's a very unique bone because it has a very large hole through the bottom of this bone. We call this hole, and a uh, general term, hole through bone in which blood vessels and nerves pass. We call it foramen. This happens to be a very large one, foramen magnum of the occiput bone. On the side of the skull, there's where this is where you would uh, listen. Hello, testing. See, sound goes through this little opening within the temporal bone. I'll place the skull down. The temporal bone has a small hole, external auditory meatus. Notice the upper position of this bone is thin, it's flat. This is the squamosal portion of the temporal bone, which articulates with the parietal bone like so. There's another feature that you need to know for this exam. This is part of the zygomatic arch. Let's look at the skull again. I'll bring it up. The zygomatic arch right here. This is comprised of the zygomatic which bone which is a facial bone in which it articulates with a cranial bone. This little arch where muscles of mastication which is chewing trans go underneath this arch, zygomatic arch. Two parts. Let's look at the individual disarticulated temporal bone. This is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. It's the process is named for the uh, to the bone it's reaching for. That's why we call it zygomatic process of the temporal bone. There is one bone that resides a little bit from the side of the cranial case on either side. This is known as the sphenoid bone. Looking straight on at the posterior aspect of our eye sockets, you can see these nice fissures. This is superior orbital fissure. 
and there's a little hole called the optic nerve where the your eye optic nerve passes through let me show you the same areas in a sphenoid bone right here is the optic nerve that was where the superior orbital fissure is there's greater and lesser wings the small one on top here is the lesser wing of the sphenoid and the greater wing of the sphenoid bone this little depression right here this is called the Turkish saddle which is known as cella tersica of the sphenoid bone this is where your pituitary gland resides right inside here the Turkish saddle name because it looks exactly the shape of a Turkish saddle that's the back of the saddle known as dorsum cella I will show you inside this skull this model the cella tersica this is the anterior you're looking from superior to inferior now there's the cella tersica this is the dorsum cella the sphenoid bone is just this little lip right here the lesser wing the greater wing is down here we can see this little raised area. We saw this before. This is the crystagalli of the ethmoid bone. If I hold these side by side, you can see the likeness right here. I will put this in and take it away so you can kind of see where it's inside there the frontal bone I'll do the same thing frontal bone so bones of the cra the cranium frontal bone left and right parietal bones left and right temporal bones the occipital bone the one that goes all the way across the sphenoid bone I'll bring it back into the view the sphenoid bone and the ethmoid bone bones of the cranium. Bones of the cranium. Frontal bone. Parietal bone. Left and right. Temporal bone. Left and right. Occipital bone. The sphenoid bone. The ethmoid bone. These two are very difficult to visualize on the articulated skull. I'll show you their orientation now. Frontal bone. This one's probably the easiest to visualize. The parietal bone. Left and right can be distinguished by this little anterior inferior aspect of 
the squamosal suture right here, it looks like little sideburns that come down. I like to call it Elvis's sideburns. The occipital bone, very identifiable by the large hole in the bottom called the foramen magnum. The foramen magnum meaning hole through bone that which blood vessels and nerves pass through large, very large, frame and magnum. And the temporal bone, left and right, right here, as we can see the zygomatic arch coming across in this process of the temporal bone, the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. External auditory meatus. This is where sound goes through into the inner ear. So we can hear. The sphenoid bone, I have to take the cranial cap off, resides inside right about here. I'm going to kind of remove it out of the way and show you its orientation. I will now show you the frontal view so that if you look into the orbits of the eyes and look at the orientation side by side orientation inside the sphenoid bone is the cella tersica right here this is where the pituitary gland resides. Cella tersica means Turkish saddle because it looks just like a Turkish saddle. The ethmoid bone is very difficult to see in the cranium because it is only a very small aspect that is coming in contact with the cranial vault. There is an ethmoidal notch created right here in the frontal bone and the ethmoid fits right here. This raised area in the midline is the crystagalli. It is in a sagittal plane, mid-sagittal. There's a cribiform plate on either side that's in the transverse plane. That is where your olfactory bulbs for smelling reside. Frontal bone, left and right parietal bones, occipital bone, left and right temporal bones, sphenoid bones, and ethmoid bones bones of the cranium.